Hello everybody. Well as promised I'm back a little bit later. Let's go. Hopefully it's not too dark. I'm just having a look. Let's see if we can just change the brightness a little bit. The sun's gone in. There we go. Oh that's better. Well as promised this week I am uh, tasting my two week old uh, Virginia. Which is a Gowarth and Holgarth uh, mixture, pure Virginia. It's part of their Lakeland Gold. Is it called Lake Kendall Gold? Kendall Gold range of tobaccos. And I must admit, it's coming on quite nicely. So it's just over uh, a week old now. It's about a week and a half. And yeah, it's certainly a Virginia. In fact, if you've ever had uh, Drake's Virginia, it's very similar to that. And now it's turned, as you can see, it's turned into sludge now. It started off a really nice golden colour. Uh, but now it's just it's just brown. <laughs> it's just a brown mess. It was uh, shag cut tobacco, so it was very fine. In fact, I do wonder if it's actually a cigarette rolling tobacco. To be honest, because well, I used to roll, so I know what cigarette rolling tobacco looks like, uh, and you could definitely roll a cigarette with it. It was that fine a cut, and yeah, you know you you pay more tax. <laughs> The maker, you know, the blender pays more tax if it's a cigarette tobacco as opposed to a, a pipe tobacco. So I'm actually wondering if they've been a bit cheeky. Yeah, but it's really nice, sweet. There's a richness to it as well, which may just be coming from the concentration. I don't know. So this is yeah, a week and a half old and I'll show you, see if it can focus in, that's the colour in the syringe. So it's not too bad in the syringe actually, it's it's looking a lot more golden colour, it's not focusing, sorry about that. See if I can, no, it's not focusing. I just drew up about a mil uh, and I've put a few drops in, in here. So this could be another success. It's really easy actually to do. Uh, and I was surprised just how quick this tobacco extracted, started to extract the flavour. I tried one just a day after uh, putting it in the jar and already the liquid was, was tasting, you know, really nice. But maybe that's got to do as well because uh, it's such a fine cut. The strands were just so thin. But you know, it just started giving of its flavour straight away. Yeah, I'm enjoying this, and uh, there's 250 mils in that jar. So that'll make about a litre, yeah. which is a lot more manageable than the. What was it? Like five liters I'm going to be making <laughs> with with the uh, with the Latakia. Well, I don't think it was as much as five, was it? It was about uh, two and a half, something like that. Two two liters, wasn't it? Two and a half liters, something like that. Hmm. This is this is nice. This is this. I can vape this now. I'm using a, a brand new wick I put in this morning, so I'm getting a proper clean flavour. A little bit of that earthiness again, a little bit. And I do think that's because there is probably some actual tobacco, little tiny particles of tobacco that's obviously probably been singed on the uh, on the actual wick, <laughs> maybe. 
uh, but it does have that sort of mm, just a little bit in the background not as much with the uh, the Latakia but it is definitely there you know you know that this is an actual tobacco you know put some more in oh the joys of dripping now let's see if I can do this properly without getting it everywhere let's just have a few drops there we go uh, got to be careful mm, syringes aren't the best things to drip with <laughs> you end up if you're not careful you just end up with it all coming out and it's oops sorry and it's everywhere Well, I'm thinking of getting myself a shed. I'm pleased to say that I think in three months, I think in three months, the mortgage is done. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh word. So the mortgage will be done. Or we may just hold a little bit back. We haven't decided yet. Uh, they like ninety percent off, and and to be honest, with what will be left, we'll be paying next to nothing each month <laughs> anyway. We might as well let it run. The how many more years? It's probably about twelve years left on the mortgage. So you know, with what will be left, spanned over that amount of time, and it just gives us a little bit of money to fall back on because well with I work for an EU client and um, with Brexit happening well hopefully it won't <laughs> but if Brexit happens next year then uh, I don't know what I'll do and neither does the client <laughs> so they've only been able to guarantee me work up until Christmas and then they'll reassess once we meant to know what's going to happen by October, but to be honest, I don't think we'll be anywhere near ready. Absolute, complete idiots <laughs> in the cabinet. So there's going to be an extension period or there's going to be some sort of transition and that just might make it possible for me to, uh, to carry on. The only risk is that I can't just go to Ireland as easy as I can now because sometimes I will I'll get an email on Friday saying oh could you just pop into the office on Monday which you know is a reasonable request except the office is in Dublin <laughs> and it's like well if I need a visa no <laughs> I'm also doing some work for an office in uh, same company office in Hanover if they want to ever you know, if they ever wanted me to go and have a face to face with them. So I think that's the only danger. This transition period do is just still have free access. And we can just you know, just go and work there. Because that's what I'm actually doing. It's a bum on a seat job. Uh so it's not like I'm just going for a meeting, in which case it doesn't really matter, you know. But if you if you're a bum on a seat job you know do you need visas? What's it going to be like? No one knows and this is the problem. So we thought we'd just hold a little bit of money back just in case, you know, worse comes to worse. So always hope for the best and plan for the worst as the old saying goes. But yeah, I've been thinking about getting this shed uh, out in the back and actually turn that into my office. And I'm doing that for, for a couple of reasons. One is, well, like I said, you plan for the best, don't you? or you hope for the best, sorry. Uh, and I'm hoping that this contract is going to carry on uh, throughout next year as well. And uh, I, I could just do with a separate space from the office. At the moment, it's downstairs uh, in the front room. So it's, it's like you never have a break from work. It's always there. Your computer's there. It's set up. So... I wanted a, a bit of separation and I thought I'll build a shed well not a shed not a shed shed it's it's more like a, 
like a cabin yeah a cabin uh, with a proper door on and a lock and all this although I'll be bringing the laptop in every day obviously when I've finished but I'm thinking because my lad's nine now and I'm starting to think hmm you know what things can I do with him and uh, what fun can we have together because I've just turned 50 and it's uh, it's brilliant best thing that's ever happened to me because now I can just be like a big kid and well 50 who cares <laughs> and of course I've got a big kid as a lad as well on there's nine <laughs> so when I was uh, his age no a little bit older I was about 11 uh, so this is the late 70s 79 and uh, CB radio was all the fun all, all the, the craze it was a bit like Facebook is today Facebook or uh, Twitter or something like that uh, and pretty much loads you know everybody pretty much had a CB radio even though there was illegal at the time uh, a lot of people had them uh, they were on AM uh, frequency and then it became legal a few years later and it, it went to FM and I got an FM rig as well and it was great fun and I've always thought since oh, it would be nice to, to go back to it but uh, I thought well who's going to use it today because we have mobile phones don't we uh, well actually surprisingly a lot because a few years ago the government legalized the use of something called single sideband which pretty much within a certain frequency range gives a CB -er, or you know, someone who's not a radio amateur they don't have a license uh, to pretty much operate within these set frequencies uh, as like an amateur radio you can start to what's called DX you can start to transmit abroad uh, and talk to people from across Europe and I've been watching some videos on YouTube uh, even with a small little mobile uh, CB radio uh, which now actually you don't it used to be like channels 1 to 40 now the, the modern ones uh, they actually use the frequency so, so it might be something like 27.305 or something that's what you're gonna transmit on uh, uh, and, and this 1 to 40 is sort of like dying off uh, so yeah some some of the CBs they was getting over to Canada uh, America uh, across Europe you know uh, so it, it sounds like a really fun hobby now and there seems to be quite a few people coming back to it probably people my age <laughs> but yeah people my age who were just reminiscing about when they were kids and having kids of their own now and, and you know wanting to do things together build an aerial out of some wire copper wire <laughs> so I thought this cabin could also be my sort of radio shack as well the only worry was the aerial and obviously you know oops that's my phone hang on a second oh that was the wife just a little chore to do she's she's out on the school run so where were I? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, the cabin. Yeah, so I was thinking of turning it into the radio shack. The only problem was with the size of the aerial and whether the neighbours might complain. But I actually found uh, there's several ways around it. You can do what's called a dipole, uh, which is basically just, just a wire. Uh, spanned across two trees uh, and from the centre you bring down your coax called a dipole or I was actually uh, looking at something last night on the internet and it's called the wonder loop and it's just basically a copper loop big copper loop like that and it's got a little box with a plug so you can plug it into the back of the radio and it's meant to be fantastic you can DX just with that just in your in your little radio shack or wherever you have your uh, your radio whether it be in your bedroom or your living room or wherever it's just this circular copper wire and they've got a box and that box must be some sort of amplifier 
uh, and yeah with something like a 10 watt CB uh, you can start to contact uh, Europe, Canada, America using these single sideband frequencies so I thought that would be a nice little fun hobby especially you know to get the lad involved as well and I've been toying with getting a ham license because they've changed the rules for amateur radio uh, and you can start now you can get a call sign uh, and, and and start transmitting uh, pretty much straight away after about just 10 hours worth of training at a local radio ham club and then you sit a very simple multiple choice exam uh, which isn't challenging uh, and you're a radio ham and you get yourself a call sign that's another thing that's changed in CB that uh, a lot of them now have call signs I've applied for one and mine's uh, Charlie Tango 2826 that's my uh, CB call sign well it's, it's 26 Charlie Tango 2826 the 26 is the international code for UK so that when you're DXing they know that you come from the, the UK so it's all changed it's not of this rubber ducky anymore in fact when I've been listening to some of the uh, channels which you can do on the internet you don't need a, a radio to do that just tune in uh, and also listening to them on YouTube of course no one's using any of this old uh, lingo that we used to use rubber duck and breaker breaker 19 and all this it's gone it's gone it's more like I said it's more like amateur radio these days but you don't need a license as long as you stick to these free uh, frequencies hmm so that's my musings for today my mutterings for today this is a really nice liquid I must admit I think this is going to turn out to be a corker just a straight Virginia but really nice sweet rich and very Moorish well okay that's me finished so as always I hope you have a great weekend next week I'm gonna go back to the latter key that'll be four weeks old so that's coming very close now to actually filtering so it'll be interesting to see uh, how that how that tastes are we getting any of that parique we'll have to wait and see okay have a great weekend and I'll see you all next week <laughs>